I'm Abigail Gillespie, and I'm here with Laura Libritz, author of The Master and the Maid, the first book in the Heaven's Palm trilogy. Laura, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So, um, the thing that I think sticks out the most about your book is what a strong uh, female character Katerina is. And I think we see a lot of historical fiction with very strong female characters, you know, in the Celtic tradition and in English history. But I think this is the first time we've really seen a strong German female character from this time period. What was the inspiration for her character? Well, it's well known that the, the Germanic women, they used to, when the Romans first came into Germany, so the second, third century, mm -hmm. that they were really impressed by the way that the, the tribes would come and they would have women fighting on their side. So, and it's, it's also through the history, because of all of the war in Germany, mm -hmm. a lot of times the women were left at home alone. And even after World War II, we see the, you know, the men came home, the women, just like in America, the women had been running the country more or less. And, right. And, and there, there were so many women. Right. So do you think that she was a very unusual character for her time period? I don't think so. I think a lot of times history books were written, most of the history we have were written mm -hmm. by men of the church or men of some sort of standing. And the, the history of the women was just either not told or brushed under the carpet. Or, And I have the feeling that more women were strong and if their story could be told, this is the way I would imagine it being So told. it's a biased storytelling and that's I a lot think, more yes. women's history than we yes, know about. I think so. That's really interesting. So what uh, initially sparked your interest in this time period? Well, living out in, in Franconia, in mm -hmm. a village, this whole area from along the Aish River, which, which comes in the, in the story, mm -hmm. um, they, living out in the Aish Valley, um, when I would go to a castle or a, or anywhere, you know, you'd go on a city tour, they would always tell about how, you know, this this area was destroyed and burnt in the Thirty Years' War, and this castle was burnt, and, and I started to laugh. It was the only thing I could understand in German was mm -hmm. this was destroyed in the Thirty Years' War, <laughs> and and as I started looking into it, I realized the area I lived in was was just the heart of this, of the war, and the more I started to research the more information I found and it sort of snowballed right. and now to with with the, um, the history departments in different German universities and in English universities there's just so much more stuff coming up on the internet they're researching mm -hmm. and archives are being uh, digitalized wow. so as far as researching this is the more and more information is just coming to light it's really great wow just a, a wealth of knowledge really to, to draw yeah. from that's great yeah. So you're native to Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, yes, correct? Yes. So why initially did you move to Germany? Ah, my brother's there. He was in the army mm -hmm. and he left in 77. So he was in the army and he got married and stayed and I just wanted to visit for the summer <laughs> and I got stuck. And you fell in love. Um, yeah, I got mm -hmm. stuck. <laughs> so what would you say uh, was the hardest part transitioning from America to Germany for you? Hmm. It's the difference in, I would say, the mentality of the people. Mm -hmm. um, and this is probably another reason that I started to research German history for myself, because there are just big differences in the way people treat each other and the way they act towards each other. And the more and more I looked into the history, the, the more you could see that the, the Germany was war-torn, and not just in the 20th century, but if you go back century after century this has just been it this similar to Flanders in Belgium that area wow. is flat and it's just been almost Europe's battlefield for centuries I think this shaped the people a lot yeah that's incredible um, now I have a question for you uh, there has been a lot of, there have been a lot of series based off of certain uh, times in history and uh, places um, I don't know if you've heard of Outlander, but that's a very yeah. popular series right mm -hmm. now, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's set in a certain you know time period in Scotland, and it's actually sparked a lot of interest in in that area in Scotland. I mean, it's been reported that a whole bunch more people are are starting to vacation there and and study that time period. Do you think that the Master and the Maid and the whole Heaven's Pond trilogy would make a good series of oh, that nature? Wonderful, yes, wonderful, because this is a beautiful area in Germany, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of people here who take this time period very seriously and reenactors and and uh, people who are very proud of their heritage and to see there is a, a, a historian in Nuremberg, a, a woman, who I don't remember her name but I can look it up, um, and she just wrote a, a, 
a book about the witch trials in Bumberg and they made it into a, a movie and mm -hmm. it's just this area to film in and everything is just wonderful. Oh, I bet yeah. it's absolutely yeah. gorgeous to look at. So, yes, yes, that would be mm -hmm. a wonderful thing to do. I thought so. It was the first thing when I was reading the book, I, I kept being reminded of something and I thought this is a lot like that other series and it, I think it would be great on screen. So, um, when you're not writing brilliant novels, uh, you work with guitars, is that right? Yes, I work at Hofner Guitars in mm -hmm. Germany and um, yeah, we make still, we still make the famed violin bass that one of the members of the Beatles still plays. Oh, really? Yes, yes. and and our basic of it, the, the the most of the the <laughs> the, the the base of our uh, instrument manufacturer is orchestral strings. We do violins, mm -hmm. cellos, bass, double basses, and bows. And then we do have this electric guitar, and that's what we're most well known for. Mm -hmm. The electric guitar. Period. This uh, the company's 120 years old, maybe 125 now. Yeah. Well, would you say that your your knowledge about um, you know instruments and music translates at all to the music of the time period you wrote about in the Masters and the Maid? Hmm. Hard to say. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. No, because because the the thing is the the one thing that impressed me a lot about you know people didn't have a lot of there were musicians on court and all of this but for the most part if you think about it, people had quiet mm -hmm. bird song and and this sort of thing animals wind um, music didn't play a big part until they went into the church and then if you go into a church you figure you come from a quiet silent thing and go into a church and listen to an organ right feel it go through your body these are things where and seeing the the, the architecture of a church. This is where the power came from. I was with Betsy in um, St. Peter's Cathedral in London. And the first thing we did, we looked up and she was like, you, you, you can see where people would be afraid and awed by the church and this is part of their power. And that was such a strong influence on people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, well thank you so much for you know giving me all this insight into the book. Now, I know that uh, soon, uh, I, th I think you were mentioning maybe this coming Christmas, you were going to be coming out with the next book yes. in yes. the trilogy. Um, we're all very excited for that. And if you can, are there any spoilers that you can give us about the uh, Katerine, you know, next step in Katarina's journey? Well, we know that uh, Herr Tuche is married. Mm -hmm. So, yes, he does have a wife. And so she does come, she comes out to the farm in the second book. And um, the war is heating up. This is in, in historically documented. Mm -hmm. This period in the Aish Valley was was the beginning of the the era where the troops were really moving up and down the river, and that got very hot as far as war and the the witch burning trials in in Bamberg. Mm -hmm. This was when it really started. This was the start of the second phase of that, and that heats up. Quite a bit. So okay. well, I I can't wait to read the next book and see what happens next. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Thank you. Yeah, okay.